kidneys helping the kidneys because the kin kidneys are such a cleanse you know important in cleansing and what i found is those with mthfr have issues problems with cleansing their kidneys and actually you get a build up of ammonia then we've got the gallbladder the gallbladder the poor forgotten gallbladder you know it's so important and the gallbladder does so much work and if we don't look after it we end up in this kind of estrogen dominant state and a lot of people these days are getting their gallbladders removed and really it's an unnecessary surgery then we've got the liver the liver again is important the liver supports the gallbladder they both work in tandem to create this beautiful bile that helps to cleanse and detox our system the bile goes through the digestive system and it helps to remove hormones it helps to remove toxins and chemicals out of our bowel and then we've got our bowel so our bowel again so very important our, our bowel like the kidneys is a way that we excrete toxins we take out hormones that we no longer need medications that we no longer need byproducts of liver detoxification byproducts of methylation ammonia chlorine fluoride that are in the water our bowel will work so hard to get rid of these so you can see there's so many different processes involved so many different things going on in the body but there are some particular signs I look out for. Now, of course, there are lots of different signs from clogged skin, dull hair, bloating, constipation, flatulence, smelly wind, all sorts of signs. But when I see clients, I look out for these signs. I look out for these particular signs because it gives me an indication of how their body is working. Hi, Veronica. Nice to have you here. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a lovely day, Veronica. Um, these signs, I look at my clients and I look out for them. And if I see these signs, it's actually, it's a big message to me. It's a big aha. And it's a big, okay, we need to do something here. Now, these signs can mean other things. And like I've mentioned before, body signs can move over into two things. Like keratosis pilaris can mean leaky gut. It can mean gluten intolerance. And it can mean elevated estrogen inflammation or ele ele elevated insulin. But these signs, what I've noticed is they're all quite common. And I see them commonly through people who have issues with certain areas in their bodies. So the first sign is ridges on the nails, longitudinal ridges on the nails, you know, like they're going up this way. Now that can mean low iron, so just be wary of that. But in most cases, when I see that, it, it's a good sign, it's a good indication that the gut is not working properly, that we need to do some gut care, we need to do some gut work, in particular working on the stomach, working on those digestive enzymes, working on your stomach acid, working on the pancreatic enzymes, to get that all working and get that digesting food. More commonly, I see those longitudinal nail signs when someone's got issues with candida, when someone's got a long-standing history of H. pylori. It's something that I see, and when I see that on a person's nail, I think, okay, what else is going on here? Do they have gut problems? Is there something going on in their gut? Are there other signs and symptoms of gut issues? So that's one sign that I, I look out for. Another sign I look out for, and it's kind of linked to this sign, it's linked to the ridges on the nails. But another sign that I look out for is rashes around the mouth here. So sort of around here, around here, and maybe pimples and maybe dry lips. So it's very dry, maybe angry red, but particularly around this area. What that tells me is there really needs to be, again, some digestive cleansing going on. It tells me that the bacteria in your digestive tract it tells me that the bacteria in your stomach is causing issues in this particular area. Now that, coupled with the ridges on the nails, is an interesting couple of signs that tell me that there is something else going on in the gut. Normally when I see this issue around the mouth, the pimples, the dryness and the dry flaky lips, we're looking at stomach, we're looking at bacteria in the stomach. Normally, it, it, you know, a lot of times it is H. pylori, um, other times it can be candida, other times it can just be you know, a little bit of strep that's in the stomach, because a lot of people do get a little bit of strep. We get strep in the back of the throat and it goes down to the stomach. So that's another sign that I look out for when I see that around the mouth. Other areas of the body, if you get that dryness around the nose, actually can mean like low zinc. And around the eyes, we can, we're looking at kind of stress and maybe low zinc. So 
you can see how different areas of the of the face or different areas of the body can indicate other things but that's that dryness around the mouth coupled with pimples and maybe even dry flaky lips we're looking at digestive cleansing that's a sign that you do need to cleanse digestively the third sign I look out for is just general puffiness. So puffiness, again, can indicate a few different things. So you've got to be really specific where you look and where the puffiness is, when in the day, what are the other signs and symptoms. For example, low thyroid can cause a general puffiness in the body. Low thyroid, there also can cause a lot of puffiness here. There's a little bit of puffiness at the neck and maybe even around here. Um, and also the fingers with elevated estrogen, you can get that puffiness. But if you get this puffiness sort of under the eyes and sort of on top of the eyes here, that can indicate kidneys. And your poor kidneys, they do a hell of a lot of work. You know, they're the first things that get affected by alcohol, the first things that get affected by medication, the first things that get affected by electrolyte balance in your body, the first things that get affected by stress, by hormones, by MTHFR. The kidneys do so much work, the first point of call, and yet we kind of forget that. And you know, drinking too much water can be a bit much for them, or not drinking much can be, an, uh, you know, too much for them as well you know they don't they're not able to cleanse and detox effectively so they take a lot of the brunt of the work and what I find is when the kidneys are just that little bit you might get symptoms like um, fatigue low libido particularly is a sign that your kidneys um, need a little bit of a helping hand they need warm warming up painful sore knees sore joints are a sign that the kidneys might not be doing their work effectively but this puffiness under the eyes is just a sign that the kidneys and the kidneys are not clearing that kind of interstitial fluid quickly enough so either you might have had too much sodium or maybe you're not having enough sodium so you need to have a look at your electrolyte balance to support your kidneys this is why it also happens during your cycle as well because the kidneys also regulate some hormones and when the hormones changes in your change in your body that can affect what your kidneys do and it can affect fluid um, being removed from your body so that's definitely another sign that I look out for my fourth sign I look out for is acne in particular areas, some areas indicate hormonal acne. So if you've got acne on the back or acne on the chest here or some acne down the, down the cheeks here, that can be hormonal, that can be high estrogen, it can be high testosterone or DHEA on the back. But there are particular areas that can indicate liver issues. The liver needs cleansing. And these areas in between your eyes here and also kind of on the temples here, so just there, and there. So sometimes you might have the odd pimple pop up and that can indicate that the liver is a little bit angry. And with the liver, you might feel that heat in the body as well, a lot of heat going on. Um, the liver has a lot of processes to do and the liver essentially takes out chemicals from your food, takes out byproducts, there's everything from, from all the food and, and um, environment around you. And it goes through a process called methylation. It uses uses B vitamins, it uses sulfur, it uses amino acids and what it does is it essentially puts these um, puts these products into the into the whole cog of the methylation in the liver and what it does is then it produces these byproducts and the byproducts unless they're excreted properly they can cause different symptoms. The byproducts might be ammonia, um, the byproducts might be urea. So if your liver is not working effectively and you're not giving it the right pre-products to court to make those byproducts and it's and you're constipated or you're not drinking enough fluid or you're not li looking after your lymphatic system what can happen is you can get these little signs on your face and acne is one of them in particularly just here and then on your temples as well so that's a sign that maybe you need to do a little bit of a liver cleanse and particularly look after your liver gallbladder and bowel kind of at the same time a sign that i absolutely love um, and this is a sign that people don't think about. I think because we're so, I don't know, what's, what's the word? When we're, we're kind of, from, from a young age, we're told to use Q-tips on our ears, you know, earbuds, Q-tips in our ears. And um, it's, not, it, it's not actually, we shouldn't be doing that. Our ears should be draining. So we should always have like a sticky kind of wax in our ears. The wax shouldn't be smelly, the wax shouldn't be too too yellow and thick and sticky. And if you need to use Q-tips or you need to use um, like a syringe 
or your ears are really waxy, or your ears are really itchy, or you needed to use grommets, there's something going on in your digestive tract, okay? So either there's a sensitivity to food, normally it's dairy, or you've got a buildup of bad bacteria in your gut, so candida, bad bacteria. And remember I've talked about this before, your eyes, your sinuses, your nose, your mouth, your ears are all connected to your digestive tract. So what's going on in your digestive tract or what's going on in your anus or your vagina is also happening up here. It's linked, it's just one tube, it's linked. And so if you've got itchy, waxy ears, if you've got wax that you need to clean out, your body's not doing what it needs to do and your body naturally should be able to drain the wax. But if it can't do that, then something is going on internally and it's probably you need to look at your bacterial balance. I actually find with a lot of clients just from taking probiotic, um, some cultured vegetables, drinking enough water and then maybe doing a bit of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and water and just doing that a couple of times a day, I actually find that that helps with the ears. Okay, And then also removing dairy from your diet. Removing dairy from your diet also helps with your ears. So I would have a look at that, particularly if you're having to use a Q-tip. You shouldn't be sticking things in your ears. Um, and if you do have problems with your ears, look at introducing probiotics and those kind of things, because I think you'll find that really helpful. Um, so what was that? The first sign was ridges on the nails, digestive health, a digestive cleanse. Definitely that's one sign. Redness and pimples around the mouth. That's definitely a sign. Um, puffiness around the eyes so that can be a sign that the kidneys need a bit of a cleanse the kidneys need a little bit of a helping hand you know what i love i love using the um what are they called i've got a mind blank now <laughs> the packs the um you know the castor oil packs castor oil packs are wonderful to use they actually help your gallbladder they actually can help your kidneys really great thing to use um acne and pimples liver cleansing particularly here acne and pimples here a really great sign that you need to do some liver cleansing um, itchy ears so itchy ears waxy ears lots of discharge in the ears smelly wax anything like that that can indicate that you need to do a digestive cleanse but in particular you need to be adding more kind of good bacteria more lactobacilli more cultured vegetables to your diet so that's a sign there now another sign that I that I do look out for, and, and this is this is also a bit of a digestive sign, a digestive cleanse sign. It can be hormonal as well, but it's actually looking out at where the congestion is on the skin. So if you get kind of blackheads or blackheads around the cheek, that can mean actually a bit of a digestive cleanse needs to occur in the tummy. So that's another sign that I'll look out for when I'm looking at my clients. I look to see if there's any congestion on the face, as well as looking at all the other body signs as well. So those are the main signs that I look out for. And again, they're signs, they're not symptoms. You know, symptoms that you need to cleanse might be fatigue, fogginess, um, definitely constipation is one of them. You know, estrogen excess and, and dominant hormones can be an indication you need to cleanse. One first sign that I notice a lot of women do get that's an indication you might need to cleanse is actually that you start getting sore, painful and lumpy breasts leading up to your period. Because this can be an indication, one, that your lymphatic system's not doing 100% what it needs to do, but also that your liver isn't clearing the estrogen, so you're getting a little bit estrogen dominant. So that can be a sign too. So look out for your menstrual cycle and those kind of symptoms and signs. But I hope that's helped you, but particularly we've got the ridges on the nails, the redness and around the mouth, um, puffiness under the eyes, the acne here indicating liver, um, and the itchy ears, and then the sore pain, painful breasts as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, those are my sort of six top signs that actually, sh that actually show, they're the body signs that kind of show that you need to do a little bit of cleansing, and it's really helpful to know those. So I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.